Let's face it, the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro are bloody show-offs. Look at them swanning about there with their triple lens camera tech all posh and high and mighty. Makes me sick. Now you might think that these beastly blows pack the same, camera tech certainly looks that way at a glance, but the Pro model has actually got a good bit more grunt behind it. Let's take a look at those specs. So the Pro model sports a mighty 40 megapixel primary lens with an f1.8 aperture. Over on the standard Mate 20 you get a slimmed down 12 megapixel primary lens, again f1.8. On the Pro model, the second lens is an ultra wide angle effort, this time 20 megapixel with an f2.2 aperture. You once again have an ultra wide angle lens over on the standard Mate 20, but this time it's a slimmed down 16 megapixel shooter, but again with an f2.2 aperture. And both blows sport an 8 megapixel telephoto lens with an f2.4 aperture and a dash of optical image stabilization as well. Though that said, the Pro model offers 3 times optical zoom, whereas you only get 2 times optical zoom on the standard Mate 20. As you can see, quite a bit of difference, so does that mean the Pro captures much better quality photo and video than the standard Mate 20, or is there actually not that much difference between them? And what about the camera features as well, is there much difference there? Well, let's take a look in our full Mate 20 vs Mate 20 Pro camera comparison. And don't forget, for more on the mates and the latest and greatest tech to ding that notifications bell and tap the subscribe button and yeah that'll do actually. Now you might expect that the Pro model with its mighty 40 megapixel lens could capture really crisp more detailed shots than the standard Mate 20 which tops off at 12 megapixels. But even when we bump up the Pro to that 40 megapixel setting, I really struggled to notice any difference in the detail levels even when zooming into these photos. Basically, both the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro can produce beautifully crisp shots. These Mates both offer Huawei's loftily titled Master AI mode, which is basically just a wanky name for its smart scene recognition. I didn't notice any difference in the smarts between the Mate 20 and the Pro model. They both recognised whatever they were pointed at and produced very similar results. And you can knock off that AI option and manually tweak the colour reproduction on both phones to make your images look more natural or super crazy hyper vibrant. Boom! Both the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro perform admirably in dodgy lighting conditions. Even when you're shooting against a harsh bit of sunlight or some other high contrast effort, Huawei's HDR chops help to produce quite a balanced snap with a respectable amount of detail on offer. And you won't see much in the way of oversaturation in those brighter spots either. The results are definitely close enough to call this one a draw. With that AI mode activated however, the Mate 20 Pro does seem to produce slightly warmer images than the Mate 20 on occasion. That difference is especially noticeable when you swap to that ultra wide angle lens, with some of our test shots looking dramatically different despite no changes in the position or the lighting or any other aspect of the shot. You'll also notice a real difference in your zoomed in shots as well, partly because it's only a 2 times optical zoom here on the Mate 20 and also because that primary lens doesn't pack quite as much detail so you can't get that excellent 5 times hybrid zoom on the go. You can still zoom in all the way on the Mate 20 with a pinch of your fingers but it is a mere digital zoom at that point so it doesn't make any difference to the clarity. Just check out these test shots which clearly show the gap between the Huawei snappers. The Mate 20 still does a decent job of capturing a detailed photo at a distance but the Mate 20 Pro is clearly the superior device. In the evenings however you'll get near identical results from these snappers. The Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro do a reasonable job of grabbing as much detail as possible with limited grain in the full auto mode. But of course the real strength of these camera phones is Huawei's excellent night mode which frankly blows the b off of all rival snappers. The long exposure results are absolutely sublime, delivering a bright crisp photo almost every time. And there's again no real difference in quality between the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro. The portrait mode is alive and well on both of these Huawei phones too and they once again produce very similar results. The only difference I really noticed was the lack of the stained glass effect in the studio lighting settings on the Mate 20. Not exactly a massive loss. And all of the other camera features are basically the same on these phones too. The only bonus feature on the Mate 20 Pro that you won't find on the standard Mate 20 is the underwater mode, because of course the phone boasts full IP68 water and dust resistance, while the standard Mate 20 is more basic with an IP53 rating. Oh, and at a glance there's no real difference in the selfie cam tech either. Both Mates have a 24 megapixel f2.0 aperture snapper, however the Mate 20 Pro can perform short distance 3D modelling, which will be used in the upcoming 3D live object modelling feature in order to bring inanimate objects to life. I'll do a video on that if and when it actually arrives. For the most part, your selfie results are basically the same. You can once again shoot portrait mode shots and the results are pretty crisp as well despite the fact it's only a single lens setup and it's basically just using software smarts. Either way, you'll get nice Instagrammable results. Is that a word Instagrammable? Probably. 
who cares? And what about the video results? Well, both the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro can shoot full HD video at 30 or 60 frames per second or bump up to 4K resolution for a bit of, ex ex a bit of extra crisp detail. The results are decent no matter your choice with no noticeable differences between the two. Detail levels are strong, colour capture can again be tweaked and image stabilisation is pretty good even at 4K level. Just a little bit of shudder and shake as you take each step, nothing too jarring. However, with both the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro, I also noticed some warping at the very edges of the frame when shooting at Ultra HD level, something that will hopefully be zapped in an update pretty pronto. So that right there is my full Mate 20 versus Mate 20 Pro camera comparison. Hope that was helpful. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you still tempted by the Mate 20 even though the camera chops aren't quite as strong as the Pro model? Don't forget to plug subscribe for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech and ding that notifications bell to be the first to know when new shiz goes live. Cheers everyone, have a good one, love you, bye!